Amelia Morris, Chief Communications Officer for the City of Des Moines. Welcome to City Talk. When you're driving along Floor Drive, everyone notices Grays Lake and Waterworks Park. Nestled behind the trees of the park is a very busy and important place that provides us with clean water. Des Moines Waterworks. Today we'll visit with Randy Beaver, CEO and General Manager, along with Chris Jones, Laboratory Supervisor, about what's new at their facility. The Des Moines Public Library stays on top of it all. New technology, programming for all age groups, and everything in between. Now the library is under new leadership. We'll visit with Greg Hyde, the new director for the Des Moines Public Library, and find out what his plans are for the future. We have some real news you can use, so stay tuned. City Talk will be right back. DMTV is on the move. Mediacom is upgrading their cable system to digital technology, and as part of that transition, DMTV will be moving to channel 86 and 97.1, depending on your TV's technology. Follow us on April 27th to our new home on channel 86 and 97.1, or watch us live online at www.dmgov.org. With Des Moines' new smart card parking meters, there is no need to carry around a pocket full of change. There are over a thousand parking meters that now accept the new smart cards. Use your smart card at downtown meters. Insert the card and buy time on the meter. Come back, insert the card again, and the remaining value is refunded back to your card. You can purchase smart cards at any one of the three vending machines, which are located at City Hall, the 3rd and Court Parking Garage, and the 9th and Locust Parking Garage. Get yours today and leave your change at home. Welcome back to City Talk. My first guests are Randy Beaver, CEO and General Manager, and Chris Jones, Laboratory Supervisor of Des Moines Waterworks. Welcome to City Talk. Thank you very much. Randy, let's begin with you. We know that water comes out of our tap from Des Moines Waterworks, but there are a lot of other things that are going on there besides cleaning and processing water. Why don't you tell us what you do there? Well, certainly most folks in the metro area know about Des Moines Waterworks from Waterworks Park. Mm -hmm. And uh, the park is certainly a, a very important feature. Uh, it has amongst the world's uh, largest crab apple, not the world's, but the U.S. largest crab apple collection. But in I and of didn't know that. In and of itself, it's one of the largest urban parks in the United States. But we also operate two water treatment plants uh, to ensure quality drinking water, and we'll have a third treatment plant, which will be coming online very soon. And in addition to the water treatment and delivery responsibilities, uh, we also operate the Botanical Center and maintain the Fluor Drive flower mediums under contract with the City of Des Moines. Wow. I also know that you have a lot of activities in the park. You have concerts and other kinds of events. How does that work? Well, we've had uh, relationships uh, with uh, many of uh, public uh, and NGO private organizations, public organizations, who put on things like the Children's uh, Water Festival, which is really held up in Ankeny, mm -hmm. uh, but we participate in that. Uh, the Fishing Derby, hy yes. Fishing Derby, is a very popular event. And the Jolly Holiday Lights is a very popular event. They are. And couple that with weddings most every weekend or multiple weddings uh, when the weather is nice. Uh, runs and other uses. Uh, the park gets a lot of use. It is extremely busy. Now you also have some hunting uh, at the park as well. Is that correct? Yes. There's uh, the urban hunt, uh, which we coordinate. Uh, with the DNR uh, has been going on for over 10 years now and that runs from roughly the first part of October into early January. And that's the bow and arrow? Bow and arrow only. Mm -hmm. uh, that's to help keep the uh, density, uh, deer density down and uh, my understanding is that that's working pretty well. Yeah, we have quite a few deer. Um, Chris, I'd like to ask you a question about the, the process. Uh, we know that Water goes in and clean water comes out, but can you tell us a little bit about how the purification process works at Des Moines Waterworks? Sure, Amelia. Uh, I always say we do two basic things there at the treatment plant. We get the dirt out. Uh, the river has a lot of dirt in it, as we know, and so the first step in the process is to remove that dirt, and then we get the rock out, which 
we, we would call softening. We reduce the uh, level of hardness in the water. Hmm. So those are the two main processes. And we also disinfect the water with chlorine. We add a little bit of fluoride for dental protection. And then we remove nitrate when uh, we have high nitrate episodes in the river. How much water are we talking about that your facility handles every day? And, it, and I'm assuming it's a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week operation. Well, we treat on average uh, 46 million gallons of water a day, uh, and we've peaked on a one-day basis as much as 92 million gallons a day. Probably on a summer day, huh? On a summer day, <laughs> that's correct. Um, there is something called the watershed that you all work with. Can one of you explain to us, or maybe first define for us, what's a watershed? Why is it important to us? Well, a watershed is an area of land that drains to a common point. And actually, here in Des Moines, two large watersheds meet. The upper Des Moines River watershed and the Raccoon River watershed converge right here near Sec Taylor Stadium. Uh, the concept of a watershed is important to Des Moines residents and Des Moines Water Works customers because everything that enters the river upstream from us affects our water quality here in Des Moines. I understand that you are making some improvements to the watershed. Um, First of all, I'm figuring, how do you do that, and what improvements are you making? Well, first of all, there are several projects that are being conducted right now. Uh, a Raccoon River, wa uh, Raccoon River Watershed Master Plan is being created by Des Moines Water Works, the Iowa DNR, commodity organizations, and environmental groups. And this will determine what agricultural best management practices can best keep uh, fertilizer and bacteria out of the river. Uh, the Waterworks is also conducting a watershed project in the Brushy Creek watershed. That's one of the large tributaries of the Raccoon River. Mm -hmm. uh, the objective there is to keep manure inputs out of the stream. No. The Iowa Soybean Association and other groups are conducting projects in the Boone River uh, watershed, which is part of the Des Moines River, uh, Lions Creek, and they also uh, manage a volunteer monitoring project for the Raccoon River watershed that's funded by the Des Moines Water Works and Agriculture's Clean Water Alliance. So, so as residents, I can see now that's important, so they, we want to make sure that things that don't belong in our drinking water don't get into the watershed, which even though you're processing, it's still not a good thing for that to happen. Is that right? In layman's yeah, terms, anyway, huh? Very much. <laughs> okay. Uh, what can we as residents do to help keep our water clean? Is there something we can do? Well, city residents can make easy and inexpensive modifications to their property that uh, reduce and purify stormwater runoff, and that includes planting native species in their yards, using pervious materials on their driveway and patios, and then using rain barrels and rain gardens to reduce the amount of stormwater runoff that reaches our streams. And residents can also support uh, local and statewide initiatives that uh, are supportive of water quality. Does that have an impact in my flower garden and my fertilizer and the chemical man that comes and puts stuff on my lawn? Either one of you, am I, is, am I having an impact on the watershed when I do that? <sighs> Uh, you can if you don't use chemicals wisely on mm -hmm. your lawn and in your flower gardens and vegetable gardens. Uh, you want to uh, use fertilizers, for example, sparingly. Don't use more than what you need. Don't uh, use chemicals when we know there's rain coming, for example, when we know that it might be washed off into the stream. Okay. So, yes, there are things that the city residents can do. I know that beginning in April, um, residents in Des Moines will see an increase in their billing. So, Randy, I'm back to you. Why is that? Well, we conduct yearly financial cost of service studies that help us uh, compare what our cost per unit is in produ producing water versus what our revenue is. Mm -hmm. And the uh, improvement or increase in uh, water rates are, is going to be in the order of 2 to $3 per month uh, for a customer, depending on how much water a person uses. Uh, so we're trying to price our water to produce the revenue that we need to adequately maintain our system. We regularly look at efficiencies and operate our 
treatment facilities and all parts of our operation as efficiently as we can so that we can maximize the monies we have for our infrastructure. Okay. So those are the things that are looked at and that's how you determine what our water rate is going to be. Does it change yearly? Does it change every other year? It's been uh, yearly increases for about the last three, whether it's an increase in the uh, commodity, the rate, the water, the amount we charge for water, or whether it's in the fixed charge for water, because um, our fixed charge is uh, going to be $6 per month, mm -hmm. whether or not anyone uses any water, and that's the basic cost to maintain. <laughs> I'd like to see them do six dollars a month. <laughs> maintain our 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 uh, uh, customer service area and produce a bill and have the, a pipe in in everybody's street. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of fixed costs there, whether anybody uses any water. So we'll have that, and then the uh, unit cost uh, will increase. So that's evaluated each year as to whether or not uh, the fixed cost should uh, be adjusted or whether the unit cost for water should be adjusted. Well, I think our cost is probably pretty reasonable, but I'm sure there's some residents would like to know, is there something they could do to reduce uh, their water bill? Well, most certainly, the, one of the number one things a customer can do is to make sure that they uh, fix, repair leaking or dripping faucets or leaking toilets. Those are things that add up very quickly. And because a customer is not only paying for the cost of water, but they're also paying for the cost of the wastewater yeah. uh, based on that water use. So uh, that's the, really the biggest impact. Yeah, I've had that misfortune. Ouch. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, that, you know, that you don't have, uh, most people may not realize, but when you have a toilet or something that's broken, that water is constantly running. It really does impact. It certainly does. And then if, uh, People want to use water uh, in the summer, water their lawns, uh, water gardens. Uh, there's plenty of water uh, for that purpose. Uh, but they should avoid the middle of the, on a hot summer day uh, because the more water evaporates during the middle of the day. And that's where those conservation rain gardens or rain barrels could be helpful to you and use that water Most to water certainly. your garden. You bet. Okay. Um, do you offer any type of community in education for conservation that would help us learn how to keep water clean or could us conserve water? We have a uh, Using Water Wisely link on our dmww.com website. Okay. And customers who have access to a computer can certainly use that. Uh, we have an education program that is focused predominantly with uh, uh, grade school uh, kids. And that's been in place a, a long time. We do that in conjunction with the City of Des Moines and Metro Solid Waste and the Stormwater Utility. Mm -hmm. That's an organization called the Urban Environmental Partnership. Uh, so that does a, an excellent job of, of providing our youth the uh, necessary information about drinking water and, uh, and what we can do with our environment and how to uh, keep our environment clean. Okay. Well, Randy and Chris, we're running out of time here, but before we go, could you tell our viewers if they want more information about Des Moines Waterworks, about the park, or about the educational program, where do they go? How do they get more information? Certainly, the number one spot would be uh, going to the Waterworks website, uh, dmww.com. Uh, they can also contact our customer service area at 283-8700. And that's a 515 area code. Uh, and we are also on Facebook and Twitter. Oh, social media. Social Congratulations. Media. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> We're still working on that. <laughs> All right. Thank you both for being our guest today and for giving us such great information about what goes on behind all those beautiful trees at Des Moines Waterworks. You're welcome, Amelia. Thank you for coming. Up next, we have a city update with Shekinah Young. The Des Moines International Airport is continuing to offer the highest level of service to its customers with the newest additions from Delta Airlines. Delta Airlines will soon offer two additional flights from Des Moines to Detroit and Atlanta airports. Also, the nonstop flights to Cincinnati have returned. During this spring break season, the airport wants to make sure you get the most affordable fares through the Airfare Watchdog Tracker. Stay connected with the Airfare Watchdog for alerts on discounted fares. Visit the Des Moines International Airport website at www.dsm.gov.
A-I-R-P-O-R-T.com. Enjoy these and other offers brought to you by the Des Moines International Airport. Though it may not look like it outside, spring is on the way. Be sure to mark your calendars for the Mayor's Annual Bike Ride Registration, volunteer opportunities, early bird swimming passes, and Experience Greater Des Moines cards. For more information on registration for these activities, please contact the City of Des Moines Information Center at 515-283-4500. Time is running out to get your 2011 season pet licenses before a penalty fine is assessed. Licenses purchased after March 31st will have a $50 late fee per pet assigned. For more information on pet licenses, contact the City Clerk's Office at 515-283-4209. The Human Rights Commission is hosting its 25th Annual Human Rights Symposium at Des Moines University, located at 3200 Grand Avenue on March 23rd. Registration is from 8 a.m. until 8.30, and the symposium will continue until 4 p.m. Feel free to come by City Hall at 400 Robert D. Ray Drive on the second floor to participate in your local government at work. The following meetings will take place this month. City Council will host two meetings, Monday, March 14th and March 28th at 4.30 p.m., there are two City Council workshops scheduled for 7.30 a.m. on Monday, March 14th and March 28th. The Planning and Zoning Commission will meet March 3rd at 6 p.m. The Zoning Board of Adjustment meeting will be held Wednesday, March 23rd at 1 p.m. And the Park Board will meet Tuesday, March 22nd at 5 p.m. I'm Shekinah Young, and that's your City Update. The Des Moines Public Library has always been about more than just books. It provides us with access to some of the latest technology, and it has annual events and activities that are quite popular with the community. My next guest is the new leader of the Des Moines Public Library, Greg Hyde. Welcome to City Talk. Thank you, Amelia. Well, um, the Des Moines Public Library is a very busy place, but you've just joined us. So first, let's begin by telling our viewers a little bit about you uh, and where you come from, your previous position. My previous position was at the Atlanta Fulton Public Library as I was the Deputy Director for Public Services, both for the Central Library and for the 30 branches, eight of those um, eight additional were in the public service, public housing areas. And then I had a couple of bookmobiles and some uh, MARTA kiosk libraries that were in the down underground um, subway system. After that, I served for 13 years as director of the Covington Branch Library in Newton County. And that was a city and a county that was about a half hour east of Atlanta. Mm -hmm. I'm familiar with Atlanta and Covington. I used oh, you to live are. in Covington, living in both. But did you say 30 branches? 30 branch libraries and wow. the eight housing project libraries and the three MARTA kiosks. That's a very large library system. Yes. Um, so how long have you been working in libraries? Have you spent your whole career in public libraries? Yes, I have. I actually started libraries when I was in fifth grade, believe it or not. I saw that the school media center, the media librarian, could not shelve books. And so I organized some s different students at that time where we would shelve books. And we were supposed to be paid 50 cents an hour, but <laughs> that was a little bit against, you know, code. And so we were paid 50 cents if we donated it to the school student fund. And then through seventh grade, I was paid a dollar an hour. Oh. Went to college, and during college went through 13 majors before I came right back to wanting to be a librarian. Is that so? So it's been from the beginning. Yes, that was your gift from the very beginning. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay. Um, what would you say is the greatest asset that you bring to Des Moines? I would say it's a blend of things um, rather than one asset. I do 
espouse critical thinking on all issues mm -hmm. and to really look at all sides of an issue and be able to do some form of analysis of everything that is about an issue or a topic or a service. Mm -hmm. Also consensus building. I really find that um, I enjoy building consensus, building teams, as well as um, the communication. I feel that communication is very important to be open, transparent, and to communicate with everyone, and to let everyone know what's going on or where I'm coming from. Okay, that's good. I know that the Des Moines Public Library uses social media as one of its communication tools. Do you plan to continue to use social media? Oh yes, it's very important because during the 70s and 80s, the advent of the computer was something that libraries had to accommodate themselves with, and during the 90s, we really adopted computers in our service model. Right now, that wave has kind of gone by, and computers are our tools, and we use it for everyday operation. Everything that we touch practically has a computer involved. Communication is now the new wave. It's not so much us calling people or talking to people or typing letters to people. There are different forms of communication, and social media is that new form. And so library, it's very important for libraries to adopt these new conventions of talking to people, communicating with people, and for everywhere from Twitter to um, Facebook to even Foursquare, the new type of communication, which isn't, some people don't think is communication, but it is where Twitter people talk to themselves about where they are and where they want to be and where they want to go. But I plan to um, be on the forefront as far as the cheerleader for social media and how the library can adapt its different services to integrate with social media. Well, I know now you can do a lot of things online with the library from checking out a book, right. um, audio books, uh, looking for materials. Um, but as we move forward in this type of communication, for example, iPads and iPhones or Android phones, there is also the new mobile apps. Uh, is the library thinking about taking that approach? Oh, very much so. In fact, we have just started looking in and have purchased a system where we're going to migrate our web page so that you can access the web page both on a regular computer or you can migrate or you can actually access by a small media form such as a smartphone or an iPad or a tablet PC. And a lot of people think, well, why can't you do that now? Well, due to technologies, you can't just go to any website with your smartphone. That's true. And so we've uh, looked at the technology. We're purchasing something so that we can appeal to these people via this format. And we find that a lot of different communities out in the Des Moines area, that's how they communicate with different agencies, through their smartphone. So it's smart of us to get on the bandwagon and be, to be able to communicate via that medium. Cutting edge. The library is always cutting edge. I know that in the past that the library directors have either had a blog or had some communication on Twitter. Do you plan to continue that? Yes, I plan to continue it. Right now, the deputy director, Sally, is interacting directly with the public that do blog the library. I'm letting my feet get a little bit wet. Mm -hmm. I've been here not that long, so I'm still in the discovery period. So once I'm a little bit more settled, I plan to also blog with the citizens of Des Moines. Oh, that's great. Uh, I know you just joined us in January, but have you already given some thought to maybe what your short-term or long-term goals might be for the Des Moines Public Library? Well, the short-term goals are very personal. Right now I'm in, as I said, the discovery period. And so I'm finding out what is it that the Des Moines Public Library is all about and also, what is it that the city of Des Moines is about? Discovering the different city um, departments and discovering the different community organizations. Once I've gone through that process, I suppose you would say my goal would be to find out what is it that the citizens of Des Moines want as a future for Des Moines, where are we now, and how can the library help the city of Des Moines reach its future, reach its vision? Then as far as long-term goals, that's something that I'll be developing with the library board, mm -hmm. with the library staff, and with members of the community. What should be the vision of the library? Of course, there will be things that I'll help with, such as um, we do have the reality of computerization, 
so we'll be looking at new formats and also there are new services that we will have to address in the future. Forty years ago there was a different type of senior citizen that came into the library. Now it's a whole different type of senior citizen that we never would have thought. Mm -hmm. They sometimes have their second or third career. So these are things that we'll be developing and you'll hear more about our long-term visions and goals once we've got that set. Yeah. You'll find that we love our libraries in Des Moines. Um, as a matter of fact, um, we'd like to get an update on the Franklin uh, Library. I know that they've been working on that renovation project. So how is that coming along? That's coming along very nicely. In fact, I was there just yesterday and the walls are up, um, the sheetrock is being taped, some of the tile is up in the children's restrooms, and the crew is just really going great guns on that project. I'm, uh, I was very pleased with what I saw. We now are thinking that we'll be ob able to open the library sometime in the summer to late summer. So then uh, you'll be closing down the facility at Merle Hay Mall and everything will be moved back to Franklin? Yes, everything will be transitioned to the new renovated building on Franklin. What do you think is going to be the most popular feature at the Franklin Avenue Library? Oh, I think, first of all, the space. The, <laughs> the former building was a little bit cramped. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things that we find with a new library is that features that you've had all along, or collections that you've had all along, because of the space, people think that they're new. It's just that they can see them in the larger space. So I think we'll have a lot of circulation. Mm -hmm. I think that the programs will have more space for programming, so you will see more programs that will be made available to the public. And you'll also see more of a commons, is what I call it, more mm -hmm. of a living room concept where people will, mm. will want to just come and hang out at the library. Wow, that is nice. I know that there's a fireplace uh, yes. and there are you know, seating areas which really look like someone's living room and what a comfortable place to curl up with a book. Very cozy. And also, for those people that telecommute, I know it's more and more popular to stay home one or two days a week and work at home. Sometimes home is a little bit too tempting with those snacks in the kitchen mm -hmm. or the kids have the day off. So a lot of telecommuters will come to the library and enjoy the features of the library to do their work mm -hmm. instead of coming down to the office. Well, we know that our library has a lot more than just books. Uh, tell us what, if, what activities we have coming up for the month of March that people might be interested in at our library. Well, for the month of March, um, right away is the Soul Food Festival at the Forest Avenue branch. And the community, the, it's sponsored by the Friends of the Library, but the community is always so receptive. I believe the first um, Saturday is the 5th of March. And um, also throughout the month, we have on the 7th, the Central Library has a uh, job assistance program, but these programs are th um, provided throughout the month at the Central Library and at all branches. Contact your local library to find out if they have a program, if you want some assistance with resumes and finding a job. Um, for those of us who are budding writers, we have a writer's workshop at the Central Library on the 7th as well and uh, where writers can come together, show what they've been working on, and give each other some good critical analysis and suggestions. We also have um, on the East Side Library on the 15th some really great computer classes that teach you how to edit your photos. You'll never have a bad photo again if you come to this class. I need that class. Where is that? <laughs> That's at the East Side Library on the 15th of March. Okay. We have a lot of teen programs, such as on the 30th of the month at the Franklin Avenue Library, we have something that's very popular, decorating cupcakes for teens. And it's something that teens really like to do. So come down to the Franklin Avenue Library, or on the same day at the Northside Library, we have a teen DIY craft time where they're going to be dealing with of all things, duct tape. And you know duct tape is quite the fashionable thing in New York now to make wallets and purses out of duct tape. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? And then, of course, throughout the month, we have different story times at the various libraries. Um, call your library and find out what story time is being offered for what age group, uh, for child, to toddlers, whatever. But um, at the Central Library, we have a free movie on the 17th, animated movies. We serve popcorn and juice. 
And also on the 17th at the Southside Library, we have a craft time for readers, and we're going to feature Edwina, the dinosaur who didn't realize that she was extinct. So <laughs> come find out about Edwina. It sounds very exciting. For more information on your library activities, where should our viewers go? For more information, you should go to our website, or you can call the library, and I believe that um, you have it on the screen now. Please contact us that way, or just come on into the library and ask. We're always there to help to serve you. Well, Greg, again, thank you, and welcome to Des Moines, and thank you so much for coming to visit with us on City Talk. Well, thank you, Amelia. It's been wonderful to be here. <laughs> That wraps up this edition of City Talk. I hope you will join us again here on DMTV, City Cable Channel 86 and 97-1. Every month, we visit with a different city department and we bring you new information about our community. Today's program can be seen again during the replays on the dates and times listed on your television screen. You can also watch us online. Go to www.dmgov.org and click on Watch Live. DMTV is in the Mediacom digital lineup, and you will find us on digital channels 86 and 97-1. For more information, visit the city's website at www.dmgov.org. I'm Amelia Hamilton Morris. Thank you for watching.